Today, as my Christmas gift to you, I'm gonna show you my advanced techniques of using frequency separation with paint over infusion for DaVinci Resolve, along with Mocha Pro to track something that is really untrackable with the built-in planar tracker, all to remove a zit from an actress's face that otherwise looks awesome. Let's get to it. The clip that we're working on today is uh, available on art grid and there is a little bit of acne right there in the middle of our chin that's what we're going to focus on and try to remove so let's open up fusion you could hit uh, shift 5 or it's this little button right there to get into here and i like to personally i like to work um with this what's called the mid view and it's like a top-down approach to working in fusion um, because it just gives me a bigger viewer over here on the left side, a, a single viewer. And also I like to use a Wacom stylus with middle mouse set to that bottom button, which lets me quickly zoom into any sort of pixel that I need to. Um, you know, if I need to go straight into that acne that we're gonna be removing. Um, and the way you get to mid flow, by the way, is workspace and layout presets, uh, fusion presets and then just choose mid flow and that'll that'll basically give you this top down area to work and the other thing is with with the nodes there is sort of a setting that works a little bit better for vertical flows and if you hit control in this grid area you have the option for a range tool what is it options yeah build flow vertically so th that's just another useful thing to know about um, and that's how i like to work now uh, the first thing you need to do is track this shot and i'm going to skip you the whole um pain of trying to track this with the built-in planar tracker that is in uh, fusion it's just not going to work it, it can't handle this steam that we're dealing with right here okay so instead i'm going to show you how mocha pro works um, and it's how i would typically jump to anything that has any sort of weird occlusion uh, that, that that's just not gonna work any other way. <laughs> so to, to load Mocha Pro, I'm using a lot of shortcuts in this tutorial, but I'm gonna try to call them out. Shift space, shift space, pulls up your tools list, and I'm just gonna type in Mocha Pro. That's installed, it's licensed, I pay for it myself, even though they do have a discount code below. Um, and to, to load this up as a, as a Mocha Pro instance or whatever, you just say launch Mocha UI and you wait a second and it opens up this whole new interface and in mocha pro this is not a full mocha pro tutorial but i'm going to show you how easy it can be to track this area because the goal is we're going to try to stabilize this region so we can paint on this region using frequency separation and then we're going to apply the motion right back to it and so that that's the function that we're going to be doing today Let's start on a frame that where the the blemish and everything is as large as possible in screen, and I'll show you how to track. So up here in the upper left, we've got these different buttons. I generally choose this X spline to start uh, drawing on the frame, and if you hold down Z here in Mocha and sort of drag, you can get a little closer view. And the idea is when you're you choose the the uh, the tool again. The idea is when you're drawing here that this is all on the same, um, you know, planar <laughs> space, like it's all in a flat region. This isn't quite exactly the case, but it's close enough for, for what we're doing. And then to close the shape up, you hit control and tap and that, that closes the shape up. So the shape here is the actual texture that is being tracked. People get confused when they're doing corner pin uh, tracking that you can only have four points on a shape or even the planar track or fusion. That's not true at all. You make the shape on areas that you want to track, the, the texture to change between pixels. Now, the part that's actually getting tracked and that I'm curious about how good it is, is stored in the surface. So up here, there's this button called the surface tool. And what I want to do for blemishes, I want to take this crosshair and move this directly over the blemish so I can see how well the track holds. So the surface area is our track information that we're taking back to Fusion, and the shape is the area that it's looking to track. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, before we actually start to track this, down here in the lower section, and by the way, if you don't see all these available here, there's an essentials mode that it usually opens up in first, and then I generally work in classic mode, which just gives us more options down here. 
Um, I'm only interested in translation, scale, and rotation for this particular shot. Now, a lot of times if you're doing roto of, of people and stuff, I'll add shear. And every single time I'm doing something that's like a, a wall or a screen replacement, you have to add perspective. Otherwise, it's not going to be correct. Now that that is set, we can just hit track forwards, which is this button right down here. We're parked on our first frame. And we'll see if that holds through all of that. Oh, it got a little bit messed up on some of that um, steam there. I saw it wiggle. So we're going to go back and, and try to, you know, we can redo that by just changing the shape a little bit. So I know there's more steam on this side of the, the frame. So what I'm going to do is just select those and drag those over a little bit. I don't even have to have that, you know, that, that blemish included in the shape, uh, but I am for, for now. Let's try it with this shape and see. Um, what I'm looking at is the surface area is that moving, especially that point, because I want that to be lock, locked in pretty, pretty solid. And I'm letting this go through while screen recording. <laughs> and that looks pretty good to me. So now the next thing is how do we get this data back into Resolve Fusion to actually make use of it and stabilize the area to paint on it? Well, there's a couple ways to do that. Um, basically, the idea, though, is this surface area is the tracking information. So that's what the area we're going to have useful to paint. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to make this surface area larger. Okay, I'm expanding this because this will be the stabilized area that I have to work. And I just want to have make sure I have plenty of skin to clone from. So now that I've got that expanded, you go down here to export track. You say black magic fusion comp data. You've got all these options in, in Mocha Pro. Copy to clipboard. Now here's the catch. Uh, hit save and close. Don't go straight back to fusion or it crashes. Like uh, the host thing just doesn't work. And now that's stored in our clipboard. We can come over here, click where anywhere you click in this flow area is where it's going to paste. Then you hit Command V to paste, and we have a standard tracker uh, tool that basically is going to stabilize this this section of the frame. Now you're probably wondering how the heck to do it. This is a this is a regular tracker. This is not even a planar tracker. Well, <laughs> this is actually so how you can use all the corner position data you get from Mocha here in Fusion. You take the output. And you plug this in twice. You plug it into the, the background and the foreground. And I throw this over here. And nothing's happening yet because we need to go over to operation. It's set to none right now. We're going to use perspective positioning to stabilize. Okay. Basically, you're going to be use perspective to stabilize and then corner position to add motion back in. That's what how I remember. So perspective positioning is going to stabilize the image. And we could just choose foreground only. Okay. So if I take a look here and play now, this part of the frame doesn't move at all. So it's a stabilized image. It's like if you were going to uh, Photoshop and just paint on it. And so let's set up our frequency separation. Frequency separation, basically what that's doing is it's separating our low frequency, which is our color information, and the high frequency, which is the texture and detail information. So to do that, we are going to load up a blur. And let's load up a channel booleans. B-O-L is, now make sure you don't do the 3D one, just the, the regular channel booleans. And what we're going to do to first get our, our texture information on this image is feed our tracker, a stabilized image into the blur. And what I want to do is I want to blur this until this blemish goes away and we just have a clean color. So over here, we're going to keep blurring, blurring, blurring until that point where it looks nice and smooth. So I would say right around there, it feels pretty darn smooth. It's pretty blurry too. We're at a 25 pixel blur or something on this image. Now with the channel booleans, we're going to do what's called a subtraction and addition. You could also do a division and multiply, but for Caucasian skin especially, uh, the subtraction addition seems to work really nicely. So I'm going to do subtract and we're going to do nothing to the alpha channel. So we're going to subtract all those out. And what we're doing is we're going to take our original stabilized image, feed it into here, and we're going to subtract out the blurred image from the foreground. And what that has just done is it's basically given us 
a, a detail section. And so if we feel like we haven't smoothed that out enough, I think that's pretty good. Uh, you can increase the blur. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to, to put this all back together because um, anytime we, we tear stuff apart, we're, we build it back together. The way we do that is with an addition channel Boolean. So I've got this one that's subtracted. I'm going to do Command C to copy that. Click down here where I want it to land, Command V. And on this channel Boolean, we're going to do Add. So what we're doing for the add is we're going to add this, the, the, the frequency with the blurred one. And when we come back here, we have exactly this, the same image because we haven't done any painting yet. So the idea here is that this image here from the tracker is exactly the same as this um, because it's just math on those pixels, right? So now it's time to do some painting. And where does the paint go? Well, the paint is going to go in the high frequency part of the image because we're going to take, um, we're going to be basically taking the texture information from here and placing it there. So let's grab a, a paint tool and it'll go right after this guy. So shift space paint and the paint tool we're using. Um, the way I'm going to be doing this is with this right here, which is called, I think it's called stroke, but it's basically, it's the one that applies to all the frames, not just one single frame. And then over here, we're going to choose clone because we want to clone. And actually, I also want to choose snap offset. What snap offset does is it, it makes sure that I'm actually cloning like full pixels. So there's not some inter, you know, interpolation, interpolation between the two. Uh, and so anyways, now you can where we've got the paint loaded. Um, I can zoom in real easily with my Wacom because I just hold the middle mouse in the area that I want to be cloning. And we have this whole area stabilized. If I want to change the brush size, you can hold down Command, and it changes the brush size. And the other really nice thing about having a Wacom is under Brush Controls over here, you can see Tablet Settings. We have um, Vary Opacity by Pressure. So as I push harder, I'm laying down more paint. Um, it's just like Photoshop. So the way we actually start to paint is you hold Option to sample a region. Okay. So I'm going to hold uh, option to sample this texture area right here. And then I'm going to just lightly brush that texture from the one area to the other. And then let's see, there's a little discoloration there. You can kind of do that over there. And we didn't even do this little white spot. I didn't think we needed to do that, but you can just kind of clean and smooth out some other color areas that are beyond that blemish. And then you always want to make sure to zoom out uh, to see how you're doing. So I'm holding down that middle mouse, and then let the footage play out. So this is a stabilized frame, and you can see if there's there's anything that, that is not really working. I think, especially for tutorial's sake, and keeping things moving, we're in a pretty good spot. So if we want to see before, you can see right there, and here is our after cleanup is right there. Now, I, I know you're seeing this spot right here. This would probably need a different track because that's very much a different plane. Um, but I think we're in, in a pretty good spot. So to put the motion back on, that's what you're wondering now, right? You put the motion back on by taking the same tracker right here. You do a Command C, click over here where you want it to land, Command V, and you can send the output of this cleanup that we did into both areas like we did prior. Throw that over there. And it hasn't done anything. It just blew up more, Chadwick. Well, that's because under operation, it was still set to perspective positioning. So under here, you just change this to corner positioning. And we have that motion moving again. Um, however, I will say one thing that is we, we I skipped over a step to prove a point here. We have a whole bunch of pixels we're moving um, and then removing. And we want to limit that to a very specific part of the, the screen, the part that we're changing and, and cleaning up. And so what I want to do is I actually want to just maybe make a little cutout of this section and only have that part be affected for uh, how we're putting this all together. So the way I'm going to limit that is actually, I really love channel booleans, so let's just add another one of those <laughs> to sort of cut out the area of, of the cleanup that, that we had done. So while looking at the, the uncleaned up area, we can take a B-spline tool, which we've got polygon and the B-spline. B-splines are my favorites because they're nice and smooth. 
and we can just come over here and kind of oh I guess we did some stuff over here too um, just just you know if you're just doing one spot you just do the one area and make a little mask with it unhooked while you're drawing it that's kind of important and then also as soon as I draw mask in fusion I always want to get almost always want to get rid of the the whatever the the B spline polyline the keyframe that's on it because if I'm not rotoing, I don't want to accidentally start moving this. Uh, if I moved it to a different frame, it would it would keyframe automatically. So we're going to hook this into channel booleans. It hasn't done anything yet um, that we want it to because I want this to cut out that area that we just selected. And that the way you do that is you go to settings, multiply by mask. And as soon as we do that, now we have our little cut out of it. And in fact, I might go back to this B spline area and soften the, the cut out just a hair. Um, before you do that, one thing I would probably do is come into here and remove the controls, show controls, uh, command K on a Mac gets rid of those. So you can actually use the soft edge control while holding command at very fine increments to really just kind of, it's what it's doing is it's softening the edge right there so that it'll blend a little bit. You won't see such a hard line. Um, so you might just do that with, with command, which is really nice with floating point. And we come back over to here, you can see our patch. And then you go to this one, the patch is moving. And now all we need to do is stick this patch back on top of the original footage. And if you've used Fusion before, I think you know about the merge tool, that's where we're headed next. So coming back over to our flow, we're gonna grab the good old merge tool. It's shift space, merge, I don't even, MRG, and we're taking the yellow background, okay, the full original source image, right, and we're going to plug in our patch, which is right there, and you'll see the magic happen. So that's going over the top, the green goes on top, and look at that, it's gone. You can, especially once it's zoomed out, Command F, zooms to fit, you can't even tell it was there. So if you look at the, um, and then the next thing is to get this back to the edit page. It's very simple. You can disconnect media out from there. Media out means that the footage is being rendered back to the timeline. Okay. So when you go back to the edit page, it's there. But before we do that, I'm going to show a, a quick way of doing a split screen here in Fusion. Um, and that is um, right now we're loaded in our A buffer. That's shown right here. If you want to switch to your B buffer, which is also, it's the comma, period, and then the question mark, the slash key to change between these. Let's get our B buffer loaded with the original image by just dragging that over into there. Now we've got an A and a B buffer. There's actually a split here too. So what the split does is it gives us a line. And the way I always, because I just want to see the, where the line is, I'm going to hit Command and Option by clicking. Oh, I'll tell you one thing that just happened. We turned our controls off for messing with that polygon mask. And so make sure you show your controls back on if, if, if you do that at any point. I should have done that before. And it's a command K while you're in that area. Well, it's funny. It, uh, anyways, <laughs> uh, we will, we'll just skip past that. Just ignore me on that one. But you can see here is uh, the, A side, the A side is our after, the B sides are, are before. You can see we've, we've gotten rid of those spots. You can kind of check it on different frames. And the only pixels we've affected are what's on that patch. So that's the only part that would potentially get a little bit softer from what's called filtering. And so anyways, that is basically how we've taken this patch here. We've laid it on top of the background image to clean things up. And I think it's done a pretty nice job. To see this back over in the edit page now, just click the edit page. And we can hit, uh, I think it's Z normally. I have it set to shift Z. There is our, our cleaned up chin. And if you want to see the before, you can always hit this button up in the upper right to see the before. And there is our after. I want to say thank you for sticking through this whole tutorial about frequency separation and Mocha Pro. There are links for uh, discounts for Mocha Pro uh, down below, obviously, the art list. Anytime you click on an Amazon link or B&H link, it helps the channel out and it helps support me to be able to, to create stuff like this before my workday um, to help you become a better editor or compositor. 
I wish you all the best and I hope you have a happy new year.